For decades, nightclub bouncers were the muscle men in black who let their fists do all the talking. I broke more jaws than fucking Valentino broke out. But times have changed. If someone was to come to me and say, do you supply bouncers? I would say, no. We supply security staff, not bouncers. How lovely, are Bouncer or security staff, as we see tonight on the front line of Booze Britain, some things stay the same. Bloody hell! You could have a, a five stone wet through bloke who wouldn't say boo to a goose when he's stone cold sober. All of a sudden he gets five pints of Stella down and he can take on the world. So all these fat bald motherfuckers are scared. Suspicious and wary, Britain's bouncers normally run from the spotlight. But in this series, they open their doors to us. Tonight, there's chaos at one club when violence erupts. Nobody can see him got on the bollocks. And the bouncers are kept busy showing customers the door. The Come on, you're on. You're on. That's tonight on Bouncers. <laughs> a down-to-earth town in West Yorkshire, once famous as the home of the Batley Variety Club. These days, the building with the bright lights at the edge of town is a nightclub, the Frontier. It's 8pm and the workday begins for a Batley legend. He's Andrew Lawton, nicknamed Bungie. He's head doorman at the Frontier. Bungie's 39 and he's been on the doors for 20 years. Tonight, it's an A-level results party, which means it's going to be a busy one for Bungie, with lots of sloshed students to deal with. You got the results this morning. They'll have been out all day. I got two A's and two B's. Four A's, this guy. Four, Four A's. A's. They've been out all day. We wasted by the time we get to us. Start at one. One o'clock today. Frontier ending off, yeah. We've been on the lash all night, so we're just going to get drunk tonight. Fingers crossed they're going to be well-behaved. Um, I don't want to be... Bloodbath, I, mean, I tell you, just don't want it at all. I'm sorry. Bungie's got his eyes peeled tonight for underage drinkers trying to slip past him. Hey, girls. Hey, lady in the white, have you got some ID, please? Hello. Sorry, no ID, no Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The night's barely started and already there's aggro heading their way. Yeah, we know about getting a bit closer so we can actually understand what he's saying. Just step back, mate. That's all I want you to do. Step off the premises, mate. Fuck you, man. Have you cancer? Die. Maybe you won't get cancer. Die. It's a taste of things to come in Batley. There seems to be something in the air tonight. If he gets home without getting leathered, I'll show my ass to the Pope. Yeah, definitely. Somebody is going to give him a right thing with it. Another night, another dollar. Meanwhile, over on Merseyside, Steve's the boss of a security company supplying bouncers to pubs and clubs around the northwest. He's Steve Gibbo Gibbons. He's a security director. Gibbo's 47 and he's been on the doors for 30 years. With his mate Dave, Gibbo's checking his staff are ready for all the A-level students who'll be out on the town tonight. Everything going right, so just yeah, checking on the ideas. Yeah. No hassle now. It's going to be busy tonight. Yeah. It's only like a one-off tonight with it being students. Any other, any other, any other Thursday night, it'll be normally like half the amount of people what's out tonight. See you later. See you later. Okay. See you later. Everything all right, Tonya? Working on the doors has been Gibbo's life. Club life is my life. You know what I mean? You know, I, I wake up at like ten o'clock, me at night. That's my you know, start mode. See you later, John. See you later. It's just in me. It's all I know. And to be honest with you, it's all I'd, li I'd like to have known. Trouble doesn't stand still in a town like Warrington. And tonight's no different. There are more doors than doormen. One of their nightclubs needs a bit of help tonight, so Gibbo and Dave are on their way there to lend it some of their muscle. We're a necessary evil. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're there to keep the nice people safe 
Yeah. And to keep the bad people out of the venues, it's not a bad job. It's not bad. It's, well, it's it beats, our business, isn't it? So that's well, we've got to make it, it right. It beats stuck in shells, don't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Gibbo and Dave are heading to Mr Smith's in Warrington in case it all kicks off later. But there's nothing more rowdy yet than the oldest swinger in town, partying pensioner Stan the Man. Mr. Smith's head doorman Keith is noticing a worrying change amongst nightclub punters. You're, you're not coming in, but she's not coming in, are you? No, I'm telling you now, man. When it first started, you used to get your, your cheeky punters. I think the, the attitude of punters has changed over the years. Um, I think they're, they're more aggressive now. <laughs> In Batley, the pubs have only just kicked out, but the Frontier crowd is already packed in. On the clicker now, we've got sort of uh, 4 500 coming on a regular service. That's how what we usually get in all night, so we're doing really well. There's been a big change in the world of bouncers. Since the start of 2005, all door staff have had to be trained and licensed by the Security Industries Authority. Anyone with a recent serious criminal record won't get a badge to work. It's meant a shortage of bouncers for security bosses like Gibber. It's not like years ago where there was an abundance of doormen where, say for example, at eight o'clock someone phoned up and they can't make it. I could guarantee 10 years ago I could ring someone within 10 minutes and get them in. Whereas nowadays you can't do that. If you haven't got a badge, you can't wear. <laughs> Even those who've got badges can still give Gibbo and Dave a headache when they call in sick. The problem is, come 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon, everything's swinging. All of a sudden you get a text, they never phone you, and you can never phone them back. Can't make it, because he's got an abscess on his groin. You know, I mean, <laughs> and the other one about the rabbit dying. Yeah. I said, how fucking long does it take to fucking bury a five-pound bastard rabbit? You know. The kids are upset. This is like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Fucking that's only a rabbit. At the frontier in Batley, the party's warming up and bouncers like Ian are on red alert for trouble. This is Ian Campbell. He's the door supervisor at the frontier. He's 37 and he's been on the doors for 15 years. If someone's walking up to the door and he's blatantly pissed, he's going to be barging into people. Before you know it, you've got six or seven people knocking seven bells of shit out of somebody. As the only club in town, the Frontier gives the bouncers a particular problem. The Frontier, it's the last stop at the OK Corral, really. If they don't get into the Frontier, it's either a taxi home or a £25 taxi fare into Leeds. So getting knocked back at the Frontier sometimes does have an adverse effect on people. Watch me this. These knockers are going to get right. Doing the taxi way and get home. When you work in a big city, when you turn guys back, there's another bar 20 yards down the road. Troubles at the Frontier, that's it. The book stops there. The Frontier's strict no bottles outside rule doesn't meet with the approval of one young lady. The A level results party surprises everyone by turning nasty. It even reminds Ian of being in combat in his army days. We all thought it was just going to be a, a load of 18, 19 year olds coming in, getting pissed, going home, and jobs are good. Didn't work out like that though. For some reason or another, he just went into World War III. It was like being back in Beirut again. The frontier turns into a battlefield as troublemakers are bounced out of the club and the police are kept busy with multiple arrests. The people that were arrested, they were the local idiots. I don't think we had any actual bother with students. It's just the local dickheads that get the L down them and then just, just carry on. 
At Mr Smith's in Warrington, things are a lot quieter, as Gibbo and Dave arrive to take up their positions on the door. But Gibbo is always on the lookout for trouble. I say to some people, like, you're all right, because they'll obviously walk and they'll have the head down. And I like to, like, make a bit of eye contact. You all right? OK? No, like, I'm making a judgment to see, like, have they had too much to drink? Are you all right? Are you all right? Are they old enough? Are you all right? Are they trying to have a quick look in the eyes? Are you OK? Are you OK? See if they're being on any illegal substances? Are you OK? Are you all right? Are you all right? Okay. As ever, Gibbo's gentle touch works a charm. You alright, Arlo? Not tonight. You've had a bit too much to drink tonight, okay? You know, you're falling everywhere, your demeanour's all wrong, you know. Okay, I'm falling everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm standing on my own two feet. Can't understand you, go on, what? Not tonight, Arlo, okay. <laughs> How lovely, aren't I? It's nice to be nice, isn't it? You know what I mean? What's going on? At the frontier, most people are having a good time, but one guy is caught dancing on the stage. That's a big no-no. So the party's over for him as he's bundled outside. Sorry, I didn't realise he'd come on stage. You've been told now three or four times. I've not been told on that fucking stage. You've been told three or four times tonight. Oh. Seriously, I've not been told. It's not up for discussion, mate. No, well, it should be. It's not up for discussion. It's not up for argument either. The self-confidence seemed to shoot through the roof. You could have a, a five-stone wet-through bloke who wouldn't say boo to a goose when he's stone-cold sober. All of a sudden, he gets five pints of Stella down and he can take on the world. No, it's not all right. It's a bloody monopoly. It's not all right. It's not a monopoly, mate. It's not a monopoly, mate. Are you to make a decision, though? I work here. Yeah. My discretion is stays in this venue and all these. Well, that's a monopoly, then, isn't it? That's not right, is Inside, some are knocking back the alcohol like it's going out of fashion. Many bouncers on the front line think that binge drinking in Britain has got worse. It has gone worse nowadays, probably for the simple reason because of all the offers they do at bars. You know yourself, you can go into a bar and get two for one, which I think is like, it's a nightmare to the pub and club industry. Gibbo and Keith won't let anyone in who they think is over the limit. Yeah, not tonight. Do you want to move away from the door? Thank you. It's been drinking water all night. What? <laughs> <laughs> the water must be laced with vodka. <laughs> Never mind getting in a club. He wouldn't get in a riot. It's about five saplings, though. Drinking water and chocolates all night. That's one customer not getting in tonight. They're all God's children. Dancers may have cleaned up their image these days, but violent injuries have always been an occupational hazard. I've had injuries, plenty of injuries throughout the past. I've had uh, your fractured skulls. I've had my eye knocked out, um, glass livers in my eyes. I've been stabbed in the arm. Stitches in the head, nearly lost the testicle. Broken every finger in one hand. I've been attacked with various, various inanimate objects. Anybody can come by it. Shoot you. I've had guns pulled on me a couple of times. Stab you, will pass you, fry it in your face. Being switch bladed, uh, being Stanley bladed. I've been hit on the head with a bottle. And I've also had uh, things stuck in me like kebab sticks. <laughs> Back at the A-level party in Batley, it's getting hot and sweaty, and there's trouble brewing. Coming up, an incident at the Frontier front door pushes Bungie to the limit. You don't ever have bother like this. Ever. Nobody can see you've got all of your bollocks. It's A-level results night, and inside the Frontier Club in Batley, the party is in full flow. Outside, the bouncers are ready in case it all kicks off. But if there's one thing most doormen hate these days, it's actually being called bouncers. 
I don't like the word bouncer. Everybody used to have a stereotypical picture in the head of a doorman who's a meathead, good for nothing else, got tattoos all over the place, and he's thick as pig shit. That ain't the case now. We've got guys who've got degrees, for God's sake. Can I have a cool about it? always tomorrow, isn't it? I class myself as an ejection technician or uh, a crowd control engineer. If someone was to come to me and say, do you supply bouncers? I would say, no. We supply security staff, not bouncers. Door staff these days prefer to talk their way out of trouble. But in the past, many bouncers were violent bruisers and proud of it. Years ago, almost every door on, on every pub club had a baseball bat. That's unheard of now. You don't have that. And knuckle dusters, you, you don't have that now. The dorm the day, the, most of them are, are mummy's boys and, and college kids and stuff like that who, who can't fight or, and, and who, who are not fighting men. At the frontier, modern-day doorman G recognises the violent dangers he and his workmates face on a night like tonight. Worst thing about the job, knowing that I could be smashed over the head by a glass or a bottle and die, really. Whereas six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, people were willing to have a dust up and leave it at that. Now it's some little chav with no morals, pick up a bottle, 30, 30 seconds later, I'm dead. Every time you put this tie on, you've got a chance of visiting the police station, visiting the accident emergency, or visiting the morgue. As the temperature rises at the frontier, Ian admits he actually likes it hot. I do like the other general rush every now and again. It keeps you going, it keeps you on your toes. I'm being funny, mate. I'm being straight with you. Move now. There's plenty to keep them on their toes as more people are shown the door. No need for that, no need for that, no need for that one. But they're not even fucking telling me I'm fucking mother of slack. The A-level night has been a nightmare so far for Bungie, and it's not over yet. Rather large incident earlier on, a um, lot of lads scuffling, fighting, a lot of lads arrested across the road. That's why we've got police presence, and uh, we'll just get them on. And uh, you know, here we've got some coming out now. Come on, you can swatch out, fella. Come on, fella, bloody hell! Fuck's sake! <laughs> It doesn't matter. Smack your lungs, man. Smack your mouth. I think the bouncers were well out of order. They knew he were deaf, and they all just ran at him. He can't hear you. He's deaf. Okay, he's deaf, but does that still give him the right to carry on? Bungie prides himself on being able to restrain difficult customers, and he's going to have to put his training into effect tonight. As he come through, it was just like a wave people being knocked out of the way and he head butted the glass door and he grabbed me bollocks and starts squeezing and turning me bollocks Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. so I've had to stop him People will not go unconscious. They will let go before they get to that point, which he did. He was still like, oh, and it was like, fucking hell, I don't like this. And he let go of his hand to get put to grab his my hand away from his throat. And then I let go of him. <laughs> Took two of us to restrain him. Lynn's like 17 stone, I'm 23 stone. That kid was chucking 40 stone up and down and without us being able to control him properly.
Being able to handle yourself physically is probably the hardest part of the job. We're trained to do it, and it's just, you know, last resort. Eventually, the police come and take over. The old school bouncers would have thought nothing of using extreme violence. Oh, I found myself in any situation where somebody's grabbed hold of my balls, as happened now, I would think twice about biting their face off. I treat violence with violence. I will temp in bowl people out the club. And when I say temp in bowl, I mean use the fingers in the eyes to disorientate them. And I've never ever been one to shy away from that. If they know you're going to use physical force, and they know you, you can use it, they'll think twice and just knock them out. I broke more jaws than fucking Valentino broke hearts. Back at Mr Smith's in Warrington, it's chucking out time and Gibbo's pleased it's been a quiet night for him. Everything's been quiet. And that's the same way we got home. Clean shirt. Done. Folks down, we'll be outside, please. Go on, fellas, drink up, please. In Batley, after their worst night in years, the bouncers are relieved the party's finally over. Been a real pain last hour. Um, we don't ever have bother like this, ever. I need a beer. After a night like tonight, I could just sit down and have a beer, but uh, I don't think bar will open up tonight, so uh, I'll have to go home and have a glass of pop out of the fridge. Next time on Bouncers, it's handbags at ten paces when good women turn bad. Are you getting in there? Because they're all fucking scrubbers in there. They're all scrubbers! It's all drugs raids for the force in North Allerton and there's absolutely no love lost between two so-called best mates who Scarborough police have to separate after a bit of fisticuffs. Another quiet time for the Crime Fighters UK coming up next.